Hi, I'm Mel Pickup, Chief Executive of Bradford Teaching Hospitals, and welcome to the weekly news roundup from across the Trust. Before we start, I'd just like to say how deeply distressed we are by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. I know this situation is particularly worrying for our Ukrainian colleagues and for our large Ukrainian community across Bradford. Please know that we are here to support you and we're helping in whatever way we can. Our colleagues are donating clothing, toiletries and other essentials for refugees. And our buildings are lit up as a symbol of our support. We want you to know that we are thinking of you at this very difficult time. Now, coming up today, we're stepping back in time to look at a snapshot of our health and well-being from over 50 years ago. And we're calling on those with sea legs to sign up for this year's Dragon Boat Race. But first, Thursday the 3rd of March marked World Hearing Day, a day that promotes ear and hearing care across the world. Here in Bradford, our high-tech Listening for Life Centre, home of cochlear implant technology, transforms the lives of patients not just here, but also in Malawi in Africa. Here's ear, nose and throat consultant Professor Chris Rain, MBE, to tell us more. I think we're quite blessed at the, in the England with the NHS services. We've got newborn hearing screening so we can identify children to a very early age, supply them with hearing aids and batteries to use those hearing aids. I calculated that probably in Bradford we have more audiometers than the whole of Malawi put together. And recently we've just sent out a couple more audiometers and we're sending out more literally as we speak, have been flown out to the country to try and support World Hearing Day. We also support uh, in person. We go out to Malawi, well, before COVID, twice a year, but so this time we're going out in April for the whole month of April to help with teaching the clinical officers, teaching the audiologists, and su supporting the only solitary uh, consultant out there. If we focus on Malawi, improving access to hearing tests, will improve awareness and the fact that patients can be assessed and evaluated. Any improvement in their hearing improves their quality of life. Thanks, Chris. What fantastic work you and all your team are carrying out. Now, always one to unearth interesting facts and figures, Director of Bradford Institute of Health Research, Dr John Wright, has come across a fascinating historical record of Bradford's health and well-being. The Health of Bradford 1972 is the annual report written by the Medical Officer of Health and Principal School Medical Officer, and it provides a great insight to how things have changed in half a century. Here's John to explain more. When you look back 50 years, it gives you that sense of how things have changed, how we've improved in terms of health. So, for example, infant mortality back in 1972 was four times higher than it is now. Almost half of births in the city were overseen by GPs. That's a remarkable change. Now nearly everybody gives birth in the hospital, led by midwives. We also have big changes in terms of the city infrastructure. So when you look back at our public health inspectors 50 years ago, they spent their time going around grocers and butchers and bakers. We don't have many of those anymore. It's all supermarkets that have taken over. Our statistics in the city show that we are living longer and we are living healthier lives. But they also show how unequal our society has become. So it's the wealthy in the city who are living longer, healthier lives. The poorer are still dying younger and living unhealthier lives. And that's one of the big challenges, tackling that chasm of inequality that's arisen over the last 50 years. Thanks, John. What a fascinating record. It shows we're heading in the right direction by acting as one to create better health and well-being for everyone across our district. Now let's take a quick look around the rest of the Trust to see what else has been happening this week.
Congratulations to everyone involved in bringing home the award. Really, really innovative work. Finally, if you are ready to take on a water-based challenge, get ready to sign up. Bradford's Dragon Boat Festival will be back in full swing for the first time in three years in Saltaire on Sunday the 3rd of July. Teams of rowers compete against each other, all in the name of charity. And I'm proud to say that Trust colleagues have always put on a brave performance. Here's Actors One's Healthy Hearts programme manager, Claire Dinsdale, who's taken part before, to fill you in. The Dragon Boat Festival is local organisations coming together um, to support community projects. It just was an opportunity for the teams to get together, do something collectively and raise money in the process. It was really good fun. So there's about 12 to 15 team members with one person drumming, keeping time at the front and the rest of us paddling to that rhythm. And yeah, they do provide the boat. So we just had to practice and then hop in and go. The organisers of the Dragon Boat Race have a website and you go onto that and it gives you all the information required about entering and how much it costs to enter your team. Once you've completed all the forms and waivers, then you're good to go, really. It's very straightforward. The Bradford Hospital's charity then asked us if we would raise money for them and that's what we did. And each different ward in the hospital that applied then started fundraising. I would highly recommend being part of the Dragon Boat Race. It is a fantastic family fun day out. You get to do team building and you also get to fundraise in the process. So it's a really good cause, it's fantastic. Thanks Claire, and if you would like to sign up to take part in the festival, please go to the link on the screen now. Well that's it for this week, don't forget all our latest news and updates can be found on our social media channels, Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook. Do look after yourselves and your loved ones, and I look forward to seeing you again this time next week. Bye bye for now.